Welcome to another Holiness Meeting from the Trinidad and Tobago Division, including St. Vincent and Grenada. We are glad that you have joined us once more and pray God's blessing upon you.
Well, good morning, friends. So good that you can join us yet again in our virtual worship service. And we look forward to a wonderful time of praise and worship, and certainly the word, as we join yet again in such an arrangement. Last week, we, we featured our girls, and we thank God for our girls. And this week, we feature our young men and males. And we are told in 1 John chapter 2, verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. 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 I want to invite you to join us as we will sing from our songbook 957. And it says, I have read of men of faith who have bravely fought till death, who now the crown of life are wearing. Then the thought comes back to me. Can I not a soldier be like to those martyrs, bold and daring? And the chorus says, I'll gird on the armor and rush to the field, determined to conquer and never to yield, so the enemy shall know, wheresoever I may go, that I am fighting for Jehovah. And I trust that this would be your testimony this morning, that this would be your, your, your shout this morning, that I'm fighting for Jehovah. Let's have a good sing as we join together in this song. <clears throat> I have read of men of faith who have bravely fought till death, who now a crown of life are wearing. Then the thought comes back to me, can I not a soldier be? There's bold and daring. I'll gird on the armor and rush to the field, determined to conquer. So the enemy shall know wheresoever I may go that I am fighting for Jehovah. Sing on, I like them, like them will take my stand with the sword of God in hand. Smiling on me, opposing legions, in the victor's crown will be, and at last go home to reign. Sunny regions, I'll gird on the armor and rush to the field, determined to conquer and never to yield. So the enemy shall know wheresoever I may go that I am fighting for the Sing on, I will join at once the fight, laying in on my Savior's. He is almighty to deliver From my post I will not shrink Though all death comes I should drink Hell to is my endeavor I gird on the armor And rush to the field Determined to conquer And never to yield So the enemy shall know Sing on, will you not enlist? Will you not enlist with me? And a valiant soldier be. Then this to waste your time in slumber. Jesus calls for men of war who will fight and ne'er give war. Round in the foot, clear and wonder. I'll gird on the armor.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll gird on the armor and rush to the field, determined to conquer and never to yield, so the enemy shall know, wheresoever I may go, that I'm fighting for Jehovah. And we thank God that in him, the victory is already assured and already won. So we fight not from a, a place of defeat, but we fight from a place of victory in Jesus. We're going to quiet in our hearts at this time as we would come before God's throne and bring this meeting yet again before him because we would have brought this meeting before him even before we started. But we want to do so now and not only bring this meeting, but bring you, our wonderful congregation, before him at this time. We're going to sing the chorus. We've come into his house. And I know we're not in that physical building, but, but we are in his presence. And we thank God for the privilege that is ours, that we can come into his very presence. And we know that in his presence, there's fullness of joy. We've come into his house, <clears throat> gathered in his name to worship him. And I trust that that's your desire this morning. Wherever you are, wherever you're viewing us at this time, wherever you're hearing our voices, that you would come into that place of worship even now. Hallelujah, we've come into his house. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. We've come into his house. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. forget about ourselves and concentrate on him let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship him let's forget about ourselves all the worries all the cares let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship him Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him, and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. We've come into His house. Gathered in his name, gathered in simply to worship him. Hallelujah. It's all about him this morning. We have come into his house. Gathered in his name. Simply to worship him because he is deserving of our worship this morning. Hallelujah. We have come into his house. Gathered.
be the same. Come on, sing it with us this morning. This here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is here. it one more time. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy, I will bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we come before you this morning and we and we thank you Lord that that the privilege is ours that we can come into your very presence. God is not just coming in to four walls, but even more intimately God, you invite us into your very presence. And God, for that, we consider ourselves privileged people this morning. Amen. Oh God, we pray that as our praises and as our worship would ascend this morning. Oh God, that it would ascend to your throne as a sweet smelling savor. Oh God, and that you would be pleased with our worship. Oh God, that you would be pleased with our praise. Oh God, that you would come and inhabit the praises of your people this morning. Hallelujah. God, we bring our young men. Yeah. We bring our boys before yeah. you this morning. Yeah. God, we thank you for them. We thank you for those who, oh God, who have given of their time and of their talent and their treasure to you. Yes. God, because they recognize that all of their help comes from the Lord and that everything that they have, oh God, comes from you. So God, we thank you for the gifts and the talents, oh God, that you have deposited into our boys and our young men. And we pray, oh God, that they would understand that these gifts and these talents are an investment from you. Oh God, and that as you look on our lives, you're looking for returns on your investment. Oh God, may we be busy, oh God, making kingdom investments. Oh God, as we worship and as we serve you. Oh God, I pray that our boys and our young men will not be discouraged where they are, but oh God, that they would find joy in serving you. That they would find joy in loving you. That they would find joy in worshiping you. Oh God, we pray, oh God, for, the, for the, those who would be facing various temptations because we know the enemy's desire, oh God, is to steal and to kill and to destroy. But your word tells us that Jesus himself said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So God, in the name of Jesus, we claim abundant life over our young men. We claim abundant life over our boys, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we claim victory in in the name of Jesus over our young men, over our boys, oh God, and whatever plans and schemes the enemy have, in the name of Jesus, may those plans come to naught in Jesus' name. Oh God, and that your plans, your purpose would be manifested in the hearts and the lives of our boys and our young men. So God, we commit them to you in a very special way this morning. We commit this service as well. We commit the viewers, oh God, this morning. We pray that they would be blessed and encouraged through your word. 
We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen, amen. and amen. We are going to read the Salvation Army Doctrine, and at this time I'll be reading Doctrines 6 and 7. 6 and 7. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has by suffering and death made atonement for the whole world, and so, so that whosoever will may be saved. We believe that repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and regeneration by the Holy Spirit are necessary to the salvation of This is what we believe. Good morning, everyone. Growing up in a Christian family with both parents being salvation army officers, I was in church every Sunday participating in weekdays, family devotion, and church activities. At times, it almost felt like a routine or I had to do it because my parents did it. But as I grow older, my understanding grows. At four years old, I became a cadet at the Salvation Army Training College for Officers, a place where I would call home for the next two years. I was among other cadets who joined their parents on the journey to be trained as Salvation Army Officers in Kingston, Jamaica. I love the Lord and I have accepted him as my personal friend and savior and became a junior soldier at a very tender age. I am reminded in 2 Timothy 2 verse 22, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. My parents and the core family has helped me to get to this point. And that is why I am here today in front of you sharing my testimony. I put my youth and my future in God's hands. It is my desire to grow in His grace and the knowledge of His words. Words. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. I know that God has already paved the way for me, and I walk, in a, I walk this Christian journey with confidence in Him, that God's way is best and I desire no other way. Jesus is a friend of mine and I am a friend of Jesus. I desire each day to have a closer relationship with Him. I would like to share a line of a quote from a song which says, I am so glad I am a part of the family of God. I am growing in my faith with God. I am really learning to trust Him. I want to take the next step in my journey with Christ and become a senior soldier. God never gave up on me and I will therefore live my life for God. I cannot imagine my life without Jesus. This is why I want to proclaim my faith in God. I love Jesus because he died on the cross for me, and I want others to know how much I love him. Ephesians 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that nothing of yourself is it the gift of God. Amen. When I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. Oh, it chases me. 
see is entitled Sin Chair. The chair is used to depict sin and the effect of sin on our lives. The Christian definition of sin is purposely disobeying the rules of God. The Bible says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish heart was darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. God commands us to follow moral laws, and has given us every human conscience for intuitively knowing right from wrong. The good news is, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us.
Indeed, God inhabits the praises of his people. He is worthy to be praised. And indeed, we'll give him all the glory and honor that is due to his name. The first chorus we'll sing is all other gods. They are the works of men.
My brothers and sisters, greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. It's a beautiful Sunday once again, and we are very pleased to have all of you worshiping with us today. Today we have a very special guest who will bring the word later on, and he's Colonel Allen Satterley. Colonel Allen Satterley is no stranger to us. He is from the Salvation Army. U.S. Southern Territory. He served there as well as in Singapore, Malaysia, and Myanmar Territory, the Papua New Guinea Territory, and the Caribbean Territory. I was privileged when I was in Jamaica to work to have worked with Colonel Allen Satterley. He's a very wonderful child of God. He was commissioned as an officer of the Salvation Army in 1975 and completed his active service in 2019. He has had a writing ministry that has included the publication of 12 books. He is happily married to Esther, his bride of nearly four decades. More than anything else, he wants to be known as a, as a servant of God, a debtor of grace to grace, and a proclaimer of salvation through Christ alone. Colonel Satterley is still a writer, and um, he's the writer of Rescue the Perishing for the Salvation Army, USA Southern Territory. We are very pleased to have him with us on this program for the very first time, and I'm sure he's a good teacher, and I'm sure he will be richly blessed. Let's put our hands together and welcome him. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for letting me join you today. I'm very happy to share from God's word, and I hope that you'll find it useful. We're gonna be looking today at 1 Kings 17, one through seven, a very familiar story to, I believe, all of you. And read along with me. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed at the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Uh, Elijah was God's messenger. Uh, he confronted Ahab and basically said several things to him. It was true um, that he had forsaken the only real God. And he, he reminded them he is the only living God and not the gods that Ahab was worshiping. We need to be careful. Peace, peace and prosperity does not equal God's blessing, and Ahab thought that. Elijah was God's prophet, and there comes confidence when we know we're being sent by God. It was not combat between Elijah and Ahab that was happening, but between good and evil, the pure and the polluted, faithfulness and rebellion. And then immediately after Ahab was given this message by Elijah, Elijah was told to leave and to go to Cherith. You would think that with this, that God was giving a new ministry to Elijah, but that was not so. He was sent away from the company of other people, not among people. He would rather have been uh, out there preaching a message of repentance and telling people to turn back to God. But it was not God's time for that. And Elijah, in that teaches us that when we cannot be useful, we must be patient. Elijah was sent away from comfort. There was a King Ahab, 
and his household living in a palace and eating all the delicacies and may have been other people were starving in his land, but not him. He was living very comfortably. Uh, but, um, you know, what we have to remember is that with, without God, the best that the world has to offer is like being in a desert, while for the child of God, the desert is transformed into a paradise. In this COVID-19 time, you may feel like you're in a desert. Things have gone wrong. Things are not the way they should be. But remember, it's better to be where you are if you're in God's will than in the biggest mansion, in the wealthiest city, in the richest nation in the world. Now, we also need to remember that God's servants are shaped by the desert. We see that with David running from Saul. We see that with Jesus and his 40 days of temptation and many, many more in the Bible. And we see it is here true of Elijah. We need to remember there is no time wasted when we're waiting on the Lord. There and only there was a place of God's provision and his blessing. If Elijah had been anywhere else, he would not have been blessed by God. He may have wanted to be somewhere else, and no doubt he, he did. And, and again, going to the COVID-19, as well as any other circumstance in your life, you may wish you were in another place. Things were different than they are. But if you're in the place where God can bless you, no other place is better for you. Not at all. And there's no other place so safe for you as a place where God has brought you right in this moment if you're within his will. If you're a bit disobeying God, all bets are off. You're, you're miserable because you deserve to be miserable. And until you get your heart right with God, he's not gonna help you out. But if your heart is right with God, you're right where he wants you to be. Now we're told the ravens brought him food morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to think about here because ravens, I don't know if there's any ravens in your country, but in my country, we see ravens. They're scavengers. Uh, they um, uh, eat dead bodies and they eat rubbish. They're, they're dirty animals. And they were considered unclean by the Jewish people. They, they were not allowed to eat them or have anything to do with them. They, uh, they're not very kind birds. As soon as they're young or old enough, they, they drive them away from the nest so that they can feed themselves. Ravens are the most likely of all the, the birds to, to um, steal food. If you have any ravens around and you're trying to have a little picnic outside, good luck with that because they'll be right after they're tr getting real close trying to steal your food. Ravens are always hungry. In fact, the English word we have called ravenous comes from the word raven, ravenous raven. That means to, to be hungry like a raven. Now, what did God command those those unclean birds to do. God commanded them to do something, to give Elijah wholesome food. He was to provide, uh, they were to provide Elijah with one meal at a time. Elijah needed to be reminded during this time that God held the next day and he was to leave that with him and not worry about it. We're reminded of the man in the wilderness, the children of Israel had, remember, they were only to collect enough for one day, one day at a time. And if they kept, or they tried to get too much, it would, it would rot and stink. They were to do one day at a time. And God was reminding Elijah of that lesson. I have tomorrow is what God was saying to Elijah. Don't you worry about it. Elijah accepted these gifts because he knew they were from the Lord. And let me tell you, my friends, in our desert places, in our, our lonely times, in our difficult times, God is infinitely creative in meeting our needs. The great preacher Talmadge said, children of God, get out of your depression. God never had so many ravens as he has this morning. Now, think about that little brook where, where Elijah was. It was so small. Now, remember, Ahab sent all over the country into other countries looking for, for Elijah, couldn't find him. But here was a, a brook, a stream so small that in all their looking, Ahab's soldiers never thought to look there. It was significant, not because of its size, but because God was there. It only had enough for one person. Now listen, my friends, you cannot feed 
off the experience of other people. You can't piggyback on someone else's blessing. You must get your blessing from God. You must go to the place where God is going to meet you and let him meet you there and let him give you the experience that you need, not the experience that somebody else has had. We have to have our own relationship with God and obtain our nourishment directly from him. Now, what are we told happened then? That God dried up the brook. Now, that's kind of frightening. Here, God provided it. And now it, he, he had to disappear. Imagine how Elijah felt the day or the days he watched the, the brook and the flow of the water get smaller and smaller till it's a trickle till it was gone. It, I, I imagine he thought, what am I going to do now? This is, this is how God provided. What am I supposed to do now? It was his source of security and emotional support. As long as he saw that stream flowing, he knew that God was with him. But God did that to make him realize he was to trust God, not God's tools. Remember that. We can sometimes get our attention fixed on the tools of God and not God himself. It was also to make Elijah ready for a change. How long would Elijah have stayed there? You know, we're people of habit. And will you do the same thing over and over? How many of you have been using the same toothpaste for years and years and years? And you're going to keep using it until they quit selling it. And think about your favorite soap. Think about your, your favorite TV programs. You're going to keep going to those until they're not there anymore. And, um, and the only thing that's going to make you change, a lot of us anyway, I'm, I'm one of them, is if it's not there anymore and I have to look somewhere else. And God was saying to Elijah, it's time for a change. And that's why the brook has, has dried up. And God was now going to take Elijah from his place of solitude and put him in the midst of a suffering people. Remember, from here he goes to stay with the widow of Zarephath and, and her suffering, ready to die and so on. So God took him from taking care of himself to this place of service. Now, it's interesting. The, the name Cherith literally means cutting, like pruning. And it was at Cherith that God was pruning Elijah so that he could be of greater service. And whatever you might be going through right now, whatever you're facing, God can use this difficult time for you and use it to prune you and make you ready for his service later on. Trust God through all of this, whatever you're facing. Again, not just what we're facing in our individual countries with the terrible virus, not with what we're facing with the economy starting to, to get all unraveled. We need to remember that our sustenance is from God himself. He will take care of us. He knows what's next. And we find a lot of times things we think we have to have, we don't really need at all. And God sometimes has to take extreme measures to teach us that. These are some things for you to think about. And I'm sure as you do, the Lord will show you what he's doing in your life and maybe show you where he's given you the ravens to be fed, where he's given you the brook that's been your sustenance for your water. And he's saying to you, I'm getting you ready for new service. And when he does, don't pine away for the old days. Don't wish you could go back. Go forward with God. God bless you, my friends. Song written by Johnson Oatman. When upon life's billows, you are tempest tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. When upon my pillars we were tempted, Lord, when you were discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Oh,
Praise God, what a wonderful message. It's good to have been in the presence of the Lord. Now let's, let us bow our heads as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we once again bow before you because you are the great I am. You are the great provider. Day after day you provide for us and for this we give you thanks. We thank you, Father, for loving us in such a way that you have made provision for us even before we were born. And even in the most difficult situation, you are still with us, providing for us every step of the way. We know that there are those who may be so desperate. They may be so lonely that they think that no one cares. But as you cared for Elijah, we know that you are going to care for them. Just as you provided for Elisha, we know that you're going to provide for them. Help us to continue to trust you at all times and in our situation. And so help us not, never to forget that you are the great provider. Once again, we want to thank you for all those who have worshipped with us today. We thank you for our young men. We pray, Lord, that you will raise them up to be young men of integrity. People who will learn to serve you. People who will live holy lives so that others may pattern their lives. We thank you for the many gifts and talents you have given un unto them. And I pray, I pray, Lord, as they display their gifts and talents, that your name may be praised and others may be drawn closer to your love. Thank you again for all that you've done and for all that you'll continue to do for us. We pray and ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. This wonderful song we usually sing praise god i am saved praise god i am saved all's well all's well he sets me free god bless you have a wonderful week from the angola territory national band they're going to play now listen carefully i'm not getting excited again this is what it says Kina Nunga Ko and Nguvu Sakoma, or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure the words uh, in English go this way. I cannot win without you. I cannot win without you, O oh Lord. I cannot win if you leave me. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, the Angola Territory National Bank.